Ashley and Davis out there. Uh, what were they able to do? Uh, both were full participants, which was great. Um, you know, we didn't do any live or any contact. You know, a lot of guys have long, heavy minutes yesterday, so it was just more of a mental day. Did a lot of script, a lot of shooting, a lot of cleanup. Uh, but it's good to have them out there. Good to see them kind of do things at pace, um, kind of get reacclimated or, you know, acclimated in, in Rui's case. In Rui's case. Um, so it was good. It's good to have them out there and, uh, you know, guys can kind of get a feel for him and, and what we want to do spatially. I know you said a few times that you need to see Rui out there. Kind of like just what are the initial impressions, the baseline testing of where it is right now? I mean, it's hard to tell. I mean, there's no defense out there, uh, you know, just on the five on those stuff. He's still kind of learning the offense and uh, understanding the timing, the spacing, terminology. So it, it's still slow going. But, uh, you know, he's shooting the ball well, which is great. You know, uh, we've, we've obviously seen him impact the game, um, you know, in the dunker, working below the defense, his paint finishing, his ability to drive and score. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's still early, but, you know, to have him out there and to be, be a part of days like this are invaluable. Will Davis play tomorrow? Most likely. Most likely. And will Rui travel? Uh, it's still up in the air. Okay. Yeah. Um, what did you like most uh, about the wins you guys had against the Pelicans for a week? Maybe you'd like to see transition tomorrow? Well, I, I don't want to see us get down uh, double digits late in the third, but um, – you know, the fact that we were able to climb back into it, you know, we, we, we stayed with it. Um, you know, we, we found ourselves in that situation quite often, you know, even last night gave ourselves a chance. Uh, shouldn't have come to that, but you know, it's a one possession game with 50 seconds. You know, we had possession briefly, but you know, certainly a winnable game. Um, hopefully we've learned from some of those mistakes and, and won't repeat it. But uh, the fact that we've stayed competitive in those situations is a, it's a good sign. And what did it mean to see Daryl to get the road trip? You guys have played so well at home. Now you're going on the road. Well, that in itself. I mean, the home home court has been good for us uh, for a number of reasons. But uh, good teams find ways to win on the road. You, you have to. And uh, part of that is, you know, doing what we can do to control the controllables, you know, limiting our turnovers, making sure we finish possessions uh, defensively with a rebound. Um, you look at uh, last night, for example, you know, although at home, but – the turnovers killed us. Um, you know, those are empty possessions. Uh, then you, you, you tack on some of the possessions where we're not organized, we're not spaced correctly. Um, and, you know, we, we did the math, and it was a big chunk of our offense. We can control that. Uh, so that, that will help avoid some of those lulls and hopefully uh, keep us in the game. seems like uh, last night you noticed sort of some teaching moments, uh, I think defensively maybe. Uh, after watching the film, kind of what stood out to you in that regard? It wasn't necessarily us doing anything different. You know, there were possessions where we did it right and it worked. And we did it with a little bit more effort, a little bit more communication, um, better technique. So it's not like, oh, we just have to scrap everything and start over. It was just more, uh, let's do it the right way, do it with effort. And if that doesn't work, then we'll change. But we, we came out and started doing things correctly and it paid off. We, we were able to kind of, you know, chip away at it. All right, Coach, let's switch over to Zoom. We'll start with Josh. Coach, as you know, this is going to be the longest road trip this particular team has taken so far. Is there anything that a team can learn about itself on the road that it can't learn elsewhere? Or are there areas that the road brings out that are valuable to learn? Well, you hope being on the road, you know, it's it, most often a hostile environment. So... You know, we're all that we have. So it's just us pulling together and finding a way. Um, and, you know, regardless of our situation or our status or are we whole or not, nobody cares. So uh, whomever we play, whoever we have available, that's it. Um, so usually there, there's that kind of bind together mentality, you know, pull together somehow, somehow, some way, figure it out. Um, and hopefully that, that carries into our competitive spirit and, you know, how we approach and how we handle some of these, you know, adverse situations. We asked you about it a little bit over the last couple of days about uh, three-point shot selection. But when you're determining what is a good three-point shot, what isn't, what are some of the areas that you evaluate and you look at statistically that either confirm or, or don't confirm what your eyes are telling you? 
I mean, the easy one is, you know, wide versus uh, contested, wide open versus contested. Um, you could break it down even further. You know, are we open, wide open, or are we contested? You know, we, the, the metrics we use internally are more, um, have we generated paint threes? You know, and I've, I've spoken to this, you know, at times where anything that ignites a trigger, whether it's a cut, a roll, a rim run in transition, uh, drive to the paint and kick, um, offensive rebound, a, a post kick out. So there's, you know, a number of categories that don't necessarily show up in the stat sheet. But, you know, when those threes are taken and they fall under that category, we've shot dramatically better. Um, and not just here, you know, the, the last few teams I've been on. So th there's merit to it. Uh, so it, it, it's kind of an internal metric that we can look at and say, hey, these are the shots we're generating. If they're not going, we'll live with them. Because uh, I think, you know, ball of averages show that uh, we take those shots in general, um, they eventually will go in. Um, it's the ones that we want to stay away from, the zero or one pass possessions, you know, and obviously – your good players will bail you out sometimes, but you can't live and die with that. For the most part, are you seeing that the threes your team is taking are rhythm threes? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I. thanks for cutting me off. It would have been just gibberish anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, in general, um, they've been pretty good in the last few games, maybe not so much, but on the season, um, we've been kind of where we want to be. You know, we came in saying, hey, if we can shoot half of our threes, then, you know, and they fall under that paint category, then uh, we're going to be in pretty good shape. And I think we're slightly under, you know, 50 percent right now. Um, last three games, not so much, but on the season, we're kind of hovering in that area, which is good. OK, thank you very much. We'll go to Ava. Hey, Wes, um, you said last night that, you know, everybody kind of on the team had to take a look in the mirror and everything like that. Just in, in reviewing film, did you see anything, any positions you're, that you put your guys in, um, anything from the coaching standpoint, basically, where you're saying, you know what, we've tried this, it's not really working, um, anything from that kind of point of view? Uh, no, not specifically from last night, um, but the question was asked internally, um, you know, are we getting our guys, you know, organized, one, are we, are we running – uh, stuff that, you know, suits who we have. Um, so, you know, even today, it, you looked at the film, it's like, it's not, it's not what we're running. It's, it's how we're running it. Um, guys have to get organized. We've got to get space correctly. we got to do things with more thrust. Um, you know, we always talk about pace up and down, but I think that pace in the half court, the, the body and ball movement, um, at times it was lacking. Um, then you can show possessions in, in the first quarter where we did those things generated open shots. Maybe, maybe we didn't make them, but those, that's what we want to see. Can we do that consistently, you know, 48 minutes? And did everybody else other than Davis and Rui, we already asked about, uh, go and practice today? Yes, everyone else was obviously no, no uh, TB. Yeah. Neil? Hey, Coach, was there ever an official, like, grade for Davis's sprain and – you know, obviously he had a calf issue last year that kind of just lingered for him throughout the season. Was there any additional precaution to try and give him, you know, more than enough time to make sure it doesn't linger this year? Uh, I mean, I hope it doesn't. You know, I, I have to trust what the medical staff is telling me. Um, I, I don't remember, honestly, if it was a grade two or to what degree. Uh, it was a bad sprain. Um, it looked nasty. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think he's he knows his body. And, you know, those guys who do an excellent job of getting guys back. Uh, they're aware of, you know, obviously previous injury history. You know, all that gets factored into his ramp up. So we've been more than cautious um, and, and slow with this. Um, and, and even Davis is ready. To, he, he feels like he's ready to go. So uh, we'll be mindful. You know, obviously his conditioning will be a concern. But I don't think there's any limitations on the ankle itself as far as, uh, you know, his minutes. We just have to be mindful of the stretches. So, uh, you know, for his endurance. And you had mentioned early in the season that, you know, opposing teams are attacking Denny for whatever reason, and you guys are like, bring it on. We love it. Do you see teams, you know, maybe in the future as they get more film on Denny as he continues to prove himself, maybe not doing that as much, or it's all up to them? I, I can't read their minds, but, you know, I'm just happy that, you know, uh, we got another guy who can uh, be a stopper for us. Um, he's shown that time and time again that he, he's got the ability to do so. Uh, you know, he's got to clean it up a little bit where he learns to defend without fouling. But the physicality, his, his size and 
his versatility to switch, you know, whether it's on smalls or, or guard those bigger uh, wings or small forwards, even centers at times. So um, it gives us some flexibility to kind of move them around and shift and change our defense. But, you know, um, you know, if they want to target him, that's, you know, not the end of the world for us. You know, obviously him on the floor has been good defensively. Thanks, Coach. Christos. Hey, Coach, how are you? Uh, what do you expect to see in this uh, upcoming road trip for your team? And you have some, as a team, you have some great games uh, on the road, like uh, the Raptors, like against the Raptors, against the Celtics. What do you would like to see on this uh, coming road trip? Well, I'd like to see us sustain our, our, our play. You know, that's kind of been a reoccurring theme, you know, and, and no one's going to play a perfect game. Um, you know, the, the game has ebbs and flows where, you know, obviously – it's a game of runs, and we understand that. But, uh, you know, trying to limit those stretches where we're struggling offensively, limit those st stretches where, you know, we're going without stops, um, you know, keeping ourselves organized, valuing possessions, um, you know, getting our communication and our defense into the game early, um, coming out of the third quarter, you know, and, you know, reestablishing our identity. So, you know, those are just kind of, some things that we've talked about at length, but there's no real metric to it to say, hey, if we hold teams to this or it's just more of a, this is who we are and how we have to play. And uh, speaking about Danny Avdi and his uh, defensive effort, what did you see about his progress as the season goes on? Well, it's, you know, it's gotten better. I mean, I didn't really know he had the ability to do some of the things he's doing, you know, in the preseason. I mean, a lot of that was, you know, he missed a lot of September workouts, the open runs. So you just didn't have a feel for him. Um, you know, you, you watch film from last year and it, it shows some glimpses, but it is somewhat limited. Um, so just to kind of have your hands on a guy every day to be up close and personal and uh, get, a, get a sense of who he is and how he responds, you know, I think is, is great. He's, uh, he's shown time and time again, he's got the, that ability. It's something we're going to lean on. We'll go to Zach. Hey, uh, Coach, uh, when a player is learning your playbook and applying it for the first time, what are some challenging aspects, do you think? Well, I mean, the challenge is, you know, for us, more, the, more so for the player, because you can't throw everything at a guy who hasn't been around and expect him to pick it up quickly. Um, so I think it's the biggest thing is understanding the spatial dynamics. Um, it's one thing to understand, you know, a specific play, my spot in this play. What is my responsibility? But when that play breaks down, now what happens? Um, you know, and, and that's a challenge. It's an ongoing challenge, you know, not only for any new player, but any new group coming together. Um, you know, being able to play after the fact, play the game within the game. Um, some guys have a better feel than others. So we have to kind of go through, and you know, here's these spots. You, when you're in this spot, what can you do? Where do you need to go? What spots can you fill to open up the floor? So now we can continue to play um, in space. So I think that's probably the, the biggest challenge. 